glory to the Lord. We thank Him, we praise Him, because faithful and true. Today He's in the midst of us. He came before us and He's waiting for us. He, he's waiting for us in our church. That's why we came in today. We came in to meet our Lord and to meet our brethren whom we love. Above all, we came to meet our Lord. And the Lord has words for us, words of internal life, of comfort. He has words for all of us. And with the grace of the Lord, we would like to go to Epistle of uh, Ephesians. And I will find this as in um, cause. Uh, I, I would use uh, what happened in the evangelistic ministry that I'm involved with. You know, that where I go to uh, uh, confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, many times we have. They ask, and they ask me what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you. And indeed, the Word of God um, answers what the Lord has done for us. And chapter sec chapter two, verse one. And you. He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of, the, of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also all, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and, and his kindness toward uh, in us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And we continue now in verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and, and members of the household of God, having been built the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows in the holy temple of, in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. We thank the Lord... The word, of the word of God starts what we used to be before and you being dead in trespasses and sins which now the Spirit has given us life. We used to, we used to be dead alive for this world but dead for the Lord. Why dead? Because we were walking according to the attitude of this wor world, under the dominion of the enemy, his authority. And today, as we know, the Word of God is internal, and the Word of God is true for us today as well. There is a uh, fragrance of death outside. People think they're, they're happy. Because they walk in their paths according to the desires, and they think that because they fulfill all these things, th and they think they're happy, but they're un un unhappy. If you indeed uh, speak to someone outside, hasn't made uh, the Lord, 
may be a good person but hasn't met the Lord, you'll see that in his heart there is sorrow and a, and a void. And this void the Lord Jesus can fill. He knocks on the door of your heart and if you open I'll come in and I'll dine with you. I'll come and stay with you. This is what the Word of God says. In another verse, it says, If someone loves me, my w he will keep my word, and my, my Father will love him, and w to him will come and dwell and, s and inhabit him. This void that exists in our hearts, or existed bef before in our hearts, that exists in the, in the world, can be filled with God the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the void. And they want, they cannot fill in it with anything. So likewise, the Word of God says, from our, our birth, we used to be children of wrath. So the Lord found me dead and he gave me life from a from a child of wrath. He made me a, a child of love. Why did he do that? He he says that he answers that in verse four, because of his great love. He loved us. With which he loved us, that even though we're dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. And people come and say, I don't need a Christ because I'm a good man. I do good deeds. I help. And of course, it's a good thing that he does those things, that he puts this in the conscience of, of man. But the word of God comes to uh, destroy the arguments of the human ego. By grace you have been saved. This is not of your own works, but because of uh, the grace of the Lord. You don't deserve anything. I don't, I'm not worthy of anything. We're children of, of, we used to be children of wrath. And in order not to boast, because we're, we're saved by grace, the Lord comes, eh, comes with, uh, and, and, um, uh, puts a certain uh, order because uh, humans put, put uh, create God in our imaginations according to and the word of God says I'm coming to save you by grace and when I save you when you and even though you were not worthy to be saved He prepares for us good works for us to do. And the Lord does those. The Lord pre does the good works, actually prepares good works in order for us to walk in them. And this is, this is our fruit, the fruit of our salvation, the, sal the fruit of our salvation. And a Christian needs to be a, a fruitful uh, tree. The cr a Christian doesn't need a lot of things. He just needs to ask what the Lord has prepared for him to do. And when he has been revealed when he, what he needs to do, you will have joy. And then it will be revealed whether you, whatever you do, whether you do it with joy. Maybe sometimes if you don't feel the joy, it's not the work that the Lord prepared for you. But the Lord has work for you to do. And he brought us to his uh, holy house once he saved us. Brethren, there is a question that was asked from me 
this this period and uh, this past few years there is an there is an illness that illness is to fall from simplicity if you fall from from uh, simplicity we start searching the word of god and we start becoming a little bit like Pharisees and we look at little letters the letter of the law and and look at the dictionaries and we fill ourselves with wisdom and we inflate ourselves and we forget thee by grace yes the Lord saved us the, the Lord saved us but saved us by grace the blood of Jesus Christ saves us from all sin. We'll, f we'll, we'll fall, of course, but we're not going to lose our salvation because we commit a s trespass. The, the blood of the Lamb cleanses us from all sin. And if we, if we return by the um, just just in case we forget the grace of the Lord and we start believe believing that because you know uh, he works inflate man in verse 19 it says now therefore you no longer strangers the foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. That's what we do outside. We lift up the gospel and and we say to the people outside when we evangelize them that we experience what we read in the His Holy Word. And man cannot understand this who hasn't known the grace of the Lord if you're dead what does it mean to be dead in your trespasses and what are the great things that he's done in order to make you a fellow citizen Not only of this household in this earthly on this earth actually, but also in the heavenly household. Through the Holy Spirit that He granted us, we enter unto the holies of holies. This is what the Lord has done. This is considered foolishness to people. You know, and sometimes there is infidelity in our in our part too and doubts we may ask may not receive because because we don't have any faith and the lord said don't look at what am i doing because if you have faith you will do even greater things than what i'm doing in order that my god the father may be glorified and he added us in this church his holy bride, which is uh, a, a um, <coughs> is is a building from um, as he took us. Um, it were basically stones that we took us from the sea of the world, and he put us together, and he, and he builds us. Um, up in the holy temple like a brother who works with the uh, stone he um, manipul he manipulates it in order to fit it perfectly into the use he has in mind this is what the Holy Spirit does he, the Holy Spirit um, shapes us wherever wherever we're rough, rugged, in order to 
be smooth so that we won't scratch, we won't pinch, because when we come out of the world we are dirty, we are green, uh, we are wild from the sea of the world and the Holy Spirit cleanses us uh, and cleanses us with a baptism in the water from all our dirt or become new buildings. And we're co-fit together in the building of God. These are great, marvelous things when I'm thinking considering those things. If I lose my simplicity and remember and forget that I used to be dead, and I forget the grace of the Lord, and forget that I that I'm a fellow citizen of the uh, of the saints and uh, a living stone in the building of God. I'll get all, forget all these and I'll start being puffed up. I want to consider other people superior to me. I'll consider myself to be superior to others because, because I will have been fallen from grace and simplicity. Man outside, there are good men uh, outside, but Christ calls us, who was revealed to us with power, six, seven years ago, somebody spoke to me. He introduced to me Jesus Christ, the, w the Word of God, not Himself. Of course, uh, as a Christians, we bring, we represent Jesus Christ to other people, and and the Lord calls us to confess, confess His name, what He did for us, to confess that we used to be dead. And he gave us life. These words with uh, strength are those that touch the heart of, of man and bring life internal to people outside. Because we have, if we start intr introducing our, ourselves, the churches, then Jesus Christ get, becomes little, and we got becoming greater, and it's certain certain that whoever whoever relies on me, he's gonna fall. But whoever whoever relies on Jesus Christ, he's not gonna fall because he's the inter eternal rock. On him we are co-fit together. If you build on sand, on the philosophies of man, your household is gonna is gonna fall. But if you f build on rock, on the internal rock, the strong wind is gonna come by, but your your household is gonna remain. So outside, we have to confess. Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of our faith. The Lord has done great things with the evangelistic ministry. One thing I'll tell you. He's covered all our needs in, in Gospels, in flyers. We may not see with our eyes even though we do, that Christ brings to us. But maybe we don't see uh, actually gain, become uh, more through this ministry. But the word does not return void. It's like the seed that 
we saw went to the uh, onto into the earth, and that's what we do. We sow the seed, and we and I tell you, brethren, the Lord has covered all our needs in this ministry. Many times, he comes and tells me, Kumariane, what's my name? What is? Why are you concerned about things? And when I when I sit down and I start thinking, how am I going to do something? But when you place something with faith on Christ, everything is is perfect. And of course we um, and of course everything is perfect because He comes. We we of course waiting for the great miracles that He's going to do in the latter days. But we are all we all are a great miracle, and I am one of those miracles. <coughs> the Holy Spirit gave me life. Gave, it came and dwelled in me. It gave me life. Isn't that a miracle? We the insignificant are. Our create creator, who created everything, with one word, he he came to live. To live in a plain man. Sometimes I s we say, foolishly, where are the miracles? And that's but that's the greatest miracle. To come in and dwell inside our hearts. This is this is amazing, because brethren, when Christ comes and dwells in us, we have fellowship with the Lord. Many times we push the Lord away with our deeds or with our thoughts. We need to pay attention to our a to our actions. We need to pay attention to our sanctification, because in this vessel, the Lord dwells as well. What is my position at this point? There should be fear in our hearts, not to bring sorrow to the Holy, not to grieve the Holy Spirit. The Lord to does not tolerate uh, cunningness or so whenever there was cunningness, there was judgment. Especially this time when we are seeking the Lord in order to do the great things for us to toward our brethren or relatives, their surrounding people. We have to bring the mind of Christ. We should be as Christ is. And how? With the, with the Holy Spirit fruit. Love, joy, peace, kindness. But we we know, of course, the these things, but we don't do them. We we we're, we're difficult students, and when we take the written exams, because we, <coughs> with all the circumstances and work. But this is the uh, struggle of the Christian. We need to walk in the in the race of Christ. What do you? Because they say, what do you do? You come, you enter, and you come out the church. Do you do anything? Anything? The athlete runs. 
he but before that he exercises he practices because that's what we do in order to run the race of the faith in order to to receive the crown of righteousness that the Lord is going to grant us that day this is what we struggle for on this earth because we deprive ourselves of many things we humble ourselves of many things because 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 we want to please the Lord or Jesus Christ we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit again and again because then is gonna leave from us if I forgive him with my sins if I do them with uh, full knowledge at this time at this time the, the world n needs the gospel and the comfort from us we need to seek the Lord to fix our hearts so we resemble Christ not to remain the f the first love that we say and forget ourselves there but to uh, but return to it now as he gave us life with um with a burning lamp but to pour oil in our lamp and have mercy toward our neighbors because the Lord prepared good works and if we if we today you you're wondering what are you doing for the Lord since we're gonna kneel down soon the the Lord is gonna bring to you a brother the Lord knows the Lord is gonna bring someone next to you your work your ministry which you're going to have joy to work uh, work but not to be concerned with if we remain the wor the world the word of god the way he expresses everything in the simplicity we'll be blameless the whole all heaven and his fullness would dwell inside of us and that's what we want and then he's gonna find the lord is gonna find useful and ready to be uh, for good use uh vessels and then we'll ask and we'll, we'll receive because then we'll be the way christ wants us because it will be this the way the Lord wants us. Because maybe now we are with a little, um, with uh, with a little hammer, he's uh, he he's shaping us. All the ragged edges and make us living stones. That's why we need to have joy and to keep one of these things that we are saved by grace. But not because of works, but because of His love that He loved us with internally. May the Lord 